Hey everyone, my name is Patchworker and welcome to this video in which I'm gonna explain how I created my remix of Mr. Bill's track called Screening. So let's start by the intro, it sounds like this. So let's stop here for a second. The first thing that really happens is the piano that you probably heard. Um, this comes from the original track. I didn't change it that much except for this echo here. And so y you can hear a sort of noise coming in and out of the sample if I play it again. It sounds like as if you're at the beach and you hear the sea and the waves just slowly breaking on the shore. And the way I reached this sound is with the help of echo down here. Uh, this is an echo preset, but what I did is mess around with the noise. When you turn on the noise right here, under the character tab, this gives you the ability to m blend some noise with the sound that you're working with. And what I did is that I modulated the amount of the noise down here with this LFO right here. Now, in order to make this even more interesting, what I did is take a second LFO and modulating the rate of the first LFO with this one here that goes very, very slowly. So what you will hear coming out of echo, the noise, will go back and forth, but not as a pure sine wave where everything is sort of the same rate. The rate varies slightly over time, which I think adds a bit more character to the sound. You could also probably hear those grains right here. They sound like this. They're made of two layers. And the way I created these sounds were with the help of an amazing plugin called Quanta, right here. So I used Quanta quite a bit in this track. Let me show you how it works. It's a granular synth, and it allows you to put any kind of sample in this, um, in this window right here. So I took my own sample here, and then it's just a granular synth. So you can have tiny little grains playing this specific audio file the way you want them to and at the rate you want them to, etc. So I really recommend exploring and you can reach these kind of th sounds with it. So with these out of the way, we can move on to the first drop, which sounds like this. So there are several things going on down here. The first one is the bass, sounds like this. And this bass came from the original track. But then what I did to add a tiny bit more rhythm is add this audio effect rack in which I have a dry signal with almost nothing going on, just an overdrive and a tiny bit of uh, gain reduction. But I also added a second chain that runs the sound through a delay and some EQ8 cutting off the side at the very low end. And so if we just listen to the delay, it sounds like this. And as you can hear, I automate it on and off throughout the track just to give an extra sort of bounciness to the sound. You can hear it quite well now. Now, uh, let's move on a bit down to this synth section here. So we have two layers here. The first one is these sort of textures sounds. And these came from the Quanta sessions that I just showed before. Uh, I just recorded a bunch of samples and then cross-faded between them uh, throughout the drop. And then we have this small, small repeat thing here. It sounds like this. And this is just a tiny, tiny bit of a sample, I believe from the original piano, that I added some uh, reverb on and an OTT just to add a bit of rhythm to the drop. Now we can move on to the soft chain group right here. These are just all my percussions and they sound like this. And the way I created all of these percussions was quite simple. Um, I took 
a bunch of drum loops that I just ran through some glitches effects. So it could be portal, it could be granulator, it could be beat repeat, or anything that makes the sound a bit crispy and, and messy. And then I created those huge files that you can see here, uh, full of glitches. So then you end up with this massive sound design file that sounds a bit shit. But then I did the trick that I often do, and it is by turning on the warp here and turning on the loop button here and decreasing the length of the loop until I have a small value. And then you can move around this playhead to give you nice rhythms. So this one sounds like this. Could be like this. Or like this. Or like this. So anyway, this allowed me to cut then the audio in more interesting ways. So if, if I extend these, you can see that they're all sort of loops of this weird file. But when arranged together and puzzled in a nice way, they sound like interesting percussions. Okay, I think that's it for the first drop. So we can move on to the bridge right here that sounds like this. Let's start here with the bass. I just have this huge bass that you just heard. This is a serum patch with some effects, nothing too crazy, it's just a saw wave basically. So apart from this, there's the synth playing here that sounds like this. This is actually a synth that I took from the original track that I loved. And when I played around with, I think it was Portal again, uh, when I played around with Portal, I arrived to a weird patch and got it to sound like this. A sort of big, as if the reverb was getting out of control. And so I also added this specific element to the drop. Now, the real crispiness of this bridge happens here in the effects section. They sound like this. And so all of these sounds are created using a technique that Mr. Bill made a video on actually called fractal effects. And basically you start with just a drum loop and then you add some effect that plays through time. So for example, a delay that you modulate the speed of. You get this kind of sound, you record it, and then you take the sound that you just recorded and you add another effect that goes through time. So for example, a reverb or another kind of delay and all of this. And then you make them play one after the other. And this is what I did. All of those are sounds that came from the original drum loop and that I then interpolated and created using the sound that I just created before. So they all sound pretty interesting, I think. And of course, on each separate track, I also added uh, some additional effects if needed. So one with a crazy EQ here, one with some vocoder, um, all of this. And so all of these created very crazy effects to fill up the space between two bass hits. Now, of course, as the bridge goes on, uh, the effects go crazier and crazier, all in the hope of preparing the breakdown and the next drop, which we're going to look at now. So the drop sounds like this. So, as for the main drums, nothing too interesting. Uh, things get a bit more interesting in the bass section. I have two layers here. One comes, I believe, from a bigger sound session that I did, uh, creating different kind of sounds. So I just messed around with, uh, I believe it was Serum probably, to create heavy basses, and then I just took the ones that I found most interesting and nice sounding. And on top of this, I just added an extra serum patch with a ton of effects, as you can see here. Just a little laser. Uh, it's probably overkill down there, but anyway. Uh, together, they sound quite nice. 
Moving on to the synths, you can hear something that I created based on the sound that we heard before in the bridge that sounded like this. But that I ran through, I believe it was Quanta again, and I could manage to create a patch to play it higher pitched and a bit more tight, so with the tail a tiny bit shorter, and it sounds like this now. And here again, I took the same effects that I created before. Now, there is one little thing that I want to talk about as well, and it's about drums. Uh, the drums in themselves sound like this. So that's all good, but I also added a layer of white noise on top of it, and it sounds like this. So basically, this layer here is just taking the exact same MIDI file as the original kick snare track and just running some pure white noise in it. And I think it adds a bit more uh, sharpness and character to the drums for this drop especially. So this pretty much summarizes what's interesting in the second drop. In the outro there's nothing too new, it's just taking some previous elements and bringing the track to an end really. So I think this summarizes pretty well the interesting things that I did in this track. I hope you learned something new. Go have a listen to Mr. Bill's tracks, go check his website. The next and final track of the Mr. Bill Remixes EP will be released next week. And until then, take care.